Can we proceed? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's on. Okay, I'd like to call the budget appropriation public hearing to order. Roll call. Commissioner Schmidt. Here. Commissioner Wright. Here. Commissioner May. Here. Commissioner Robinson. Here. Commissioner May. Here. Okay, pledge allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. of hearings, budget, appropriation, public hearing. Great, so this is a, a budget appropriation public hearing. We set this date back in uh, November. Uh, this is an opportunity for the public to comment on the budget. It's been on review for the last 30 days. It's been uh, on our website, available to the public. It's been at the uh, public library as well. Uh, I've received no questions via either email or the phone, so uh, we just need to uh, this is the meeting in which public can make comments. All right, we have a couple of public people here. Yeah. Any public comments? No. No? no. Hearing none. But I'll make a motion to adjourn. I need a second. Second. Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Bates. Aye. Commissioner Everson. Aye. Commissioner Mano. Aye. Commissioner Aye. Uh, we'll open up the regular board meeting. Roll call. Commissioner Bates. Here. Commissioner Epperson. Here. Commissioner Mano. Here. Commissioner Schmidt. Here. Commissioner White. Aye. Here. <laughs> I hear. I hear. I hear. I hear. Any additions or changes to the agenda? No. 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 no, no, no. I uh, I noticed one thing. It's a, it's a typo, but it is uh, Commissioner White is the chair for the administration and finance oh, committee. Okay, so Everything else is okay. okay. You want to do with this more? Or no. Uh, uh, any citizens' comments on agenda items only? Do we have any correspondence? No. Oh, okay, very not. Consent agenda. Approval of the minutes. I move to accept the recommendation of the finance or the administration and the finance committee to approve the minutes of the budget workshop meeting held on November 9, 2019, the board meeting held on November 13, 2019, and the financial report, which includes the cash summary, the revenue report dated November 30, 2019, the invoices distribution report ending November 30, 2019, and the amount of $1,580,000. Two hundred ninety-eight dollars and seventeen cents. Second. Wind down uh, the year. I just want to take an opportunity to thank the community for a uh, wonderful year. Uh, we have great support this year for everything that we do, and it was uh, a great, uh, a great year. Uh, I especially want to thank and acknowledge those people that came out to one of the Harpool Town Hall meetings uh, to learn more about the, the project, uh, to express their opinions, their views, and to ask us those tough questions. I hope that they found uh, us to be open and honest throughout this process and will continue to do that uh, as we make our way through this uh, project. And I also want to thank the, uh, the Village of Morton Grove, their staff and elected officials, the school district 63, 60, 63, 67, 69, and 70 uh, for just uh, have wonderful collaboration and cooperation with these uh, other governmental agencies that it really is great uh, to be a part of and just the overall benefit that it uh, provides to our common constituencies. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank the board for their support, guidance, and vision uh, that they provide uh, staff. And lastly, I'd like to thank uh, staff for their hard work, dedication, and creativity in, in providing opportunities to our residents. I uh, just want to remind everyone that the administrative office will be closed on December 24th, 25th, and 31st, as well as January 1st. Uh, 
and that's an observant of the Christmas and New Year's. Did I have that right about the January one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, if they were looking for the full schedule, that will be online on our, our home page uh, on the website. Um, through this uh, holiday season, we will be offering uh, gap days in case uh, families need the opportunity to drop off their kids for the day. They're going to go to some wonderful uh, venues throughout uh, the area. Uh, there's still slots available. Uh, they just go online to register and then uh, contact Mary Bucci uh, for more information. Uh, and lastly, I just want to thank, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy, happy Hanukkah, and uh, best wishes for a happy and healthy 2020. Attorney's report? Uh, you have your report in your inbox. Um, we've been relatively quiet, other than the handful of projects that are listed there. Um, I just want to echo what uh, our director, Wade, just uh, spoke about and wish everyone a happy holiday. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with this board this year, and I look forward to many more to come. What happened with the uh, car lot? I talked to the guy. Do you want to get into that now? or later? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's hear what happened to him. Okay. I had a conversation with uh, the uh, general manager at Castle, and raised the questions that have been and concerns that have been communicated at the last meeting. Um, he, he acknowledged that there had been some vehicles of, that were um, his inventory that had been parked there. He took ownership of that. Um, he says that he can't control all of his employees, uh, but that he did agree uh, during the call to send a communication to all of his employees advising them that they can't park here. And uh, I told him that we were seriously considering and likely to act at any time after this, basically using this call as notice that at any point in the future we may be um, signing that, uh, those parking spaces uh, as uh, for our use only and uh, you know, authorizing the vehicles there to be towed if they're not for parking purposes. So he was made aware of that. He promised to send a note to his own, to all of his 100 or so employees uh, with their next paycheck, uh, so we, um, it was it was a fairly um, cordial conversation. He was respectful, um, and uh, I gave him my contact info and told him to let me know if he had any kind of questions or concerns, um, and um, that was about it. So I mean, I, I feel like he knows we're taking it seriously, and he's on notice now. If we want to. So, and he's committed to taking some action as best he can, I guess, from his perspective to keep that from continuing. And he's we'll just see. since? I was just, I yeah, just recently him, uh, today, yeah. actually. We've been playing phone tag. Yeah. Yeah. You can come over and apologize to you. Oh. I don't think that's going to happen. But um, I will uh, say that I did hear from the village administrator who said that they are working with Castle to find them. Uh, sort of an overflow lot. So they are working uh, with the village to try to help out with that. So hopefully that they have another place to put some inventory, maybe that opens some spots for their, their cars. So, right. He actually made reference to that as well. But, I mean, next to you all, between Tommy's and you all. Yeah. Sure about that. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Village liaison report. Uh, no official report. We know it uh, seemed like everyone had a lot of fun between the holidays and Santa came to town. That's all I think. Sure. Uh, Sue? Yeah, okay. So uh, we've, had, we've been very busy in the rec department. We have a lot of events involving Santa. We have Santa Claus, holidays, uh, gingerbread workshops, Santa stocking delivery, all well attended. Silver Bells Express last Saturday, and we've got one more Silver Bells Express this Saturday. So it's been very busy. Uh, Monday, um, went to the library to watch a theater, we have a theater class, so they did a performance at the library, and it was impressive. The kids were fantastic, so I was really uh, impressed with all the hard work they did and what they learned in six weeks. So it was a great show. So they'll be doing more theater classes in the next season, and we're going to try to maybe do a camp this summer. It seems to be popular. 
And then I have 12 days of member appreciation started last Friday in the fitness center. So that involves giveaways, uh, raffle drawing, um, just different things for the 12 days of member appreciation. So that's why I'm here. And happy holidays to all of you. Keith? So Step is busy. Um, November building more orbs, which we hung in the trees so we're here in Prairie View on the entrance drive. They look um, awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank good. you. A lot of compliments for people driving down Dempster. So it's good. Very good. Yeah, you can see it on the west side. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, west of the railroad tracks or something. Yeah. Thirty five thousand dollars. Didn't see anything in Sherbert. Thirty five thousand yeah. um, dollars. Get that contract and you pay for thirty five grand to have orbs on the west side. Yeah. I actually asked him last year how to make one. Did I not? So, we did get all, we received all our signed paperwork back from the Martin Arboretum, so we will be good to go with our uh, tree inventory grant come, awesome. um, our tree inventory project, I mean, come spring. And, um, yeah, so we finished, we built the ice rink, filled it, uh, Pretty close to being good to go, but I don't know if Mother Nature's going to cooperate in the next few days with us. I think the good news is here is look, it's it's a it's a tub of water. You know, if Mother Nature cooperates, we can we can stand. If not, we don't. You know, it's so not it's as if we're sharing. layering on the grass. You know, you you layer, uh, it's destroyed. So do the best that you know. It's a pond at this point. Yeah. It's holding water, so that's a, you know that's good. Frozen pine until tomorrow. Yeah, frozen pine until tomorrow. But, you know. No freezing up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, we also, we, you know, we've, we've got the, the hot water heater uh, figured out for the fitness center. It was a little bit more of a challenge than we initially thought because of the uh, the, the company that, that starts or main, makes the uh, hot water heater. They have to come out and uh, start the system for us. It's just part of their uh, procedures. Uh, and in doing that, the, the gas flow wasn't enough going into the, um, the unit, so we had to then have another company come out, put in a larger gas line for the hot water heater, but we're now up and running with hot water. So I'm sure you've heard the complaints from residents, how the, the, you know, there's no, not enough hot water, but we did try to communicate through uh, constant contact and Facebook and uh, signage that there's just uh, limited hot water, but now we're good. We're, we're Hitting on all hot cylinders, I guess. Marty. Yes. Um, well, you have some things out there to vote on today, so those are all important. But these are just secondary stuff. Um, our auditors came in. They're, they're going to start their audit. We have a kickoff date for January 14th. This is the last year of our uh, current three-year bidded contract with them. So next year we'll either um, be looking for um, putting a bid out, an RFP out for uh, auditing services for three years. Um, we, we, we received the, the draft of the ballot question we, that's going to, to show up in the newspaper as well as on the ballot on March, March uh, 17th, 2020. So we have to go and approve it and send it back so that, that, they, uh, that we approve it so that it can go ahead for uh, publication as well as for ballot position, a ballot question. Also, we're doing the, our year-end processing. We're we're getting ready to um, finalize the last year of a uh, last payroll of the year, as well as the, any well for our vendor payments that we need to make. And then once we close that down, then we're going to start opening up 2020, as well as um, putting the, um, the the things. So, uh, setting ourselves up so we can do year and proxy tax preparation. Okay, new business. We have a lot of um, action items. We have the tax levy ordinance. Right, so the tax levy ordinance, this is uh, how we fund our business operations for, for the next year. So one of these things that we just have to do. Uh, and, uh, and as such, uh, we just need uh, to uh, approve the ordinance. Uh, scar sorry, O-0419. Marty, would you like to add anything to that? It's, we, we presented the tax levy and the ordinance in November. 
we once we present it, then we it, it, we put it out and put it for display, and then the it, it's a chance for the public if they have any comments to make on it, they can make it similar to the appropriation ordinance. Once we do that, then we have to approve it at a board meeting and have it filed before the last Tuesday in December. So. Um, that's one of the reasons we have to have everything done really today so that we have enough time to file it and uh, in order to be on file before uh, the January 1st, 2020. I move to accept the recommendation of the administration and finance committee to approve the Morton Grove Park District 2019 tax levy ordinance 0-04-19. Second by Erica. Second by Erica. Thank you. Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Meese? Aye. Commissioner Epperson? Aye. Commissioner Mann? Aye. Tax extension resolution. Right. This resolution really uh, just tells uh, the Cook County Clerk uh, which funds to put money in or, or revenue into first, and really if there's if money needs to be taken out, which ones are those that we would like to have them uh, taken out of, uh, the first as well. So it's just uh, necessary to comply with the property tax extension limitation. So. I move to accept the recommendation of the Administration Finance Committee to approve the 2019 Mort Grove Park District's tax exemption resolution. R-08-19. Second. Commissioner Thomas? Aye. Commissioner Reeves? Aye. Commissioner Everson? Aye. Commissioner Viano? Aye. Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. The budget appropriation ordinance? Right. This is just the ordinance to approve the, the budget and appropriations that we had a meeting prior to the start of this, this meeting. Uh, the budget then again on display for 30 days. Uh, it's been here at the public library. Uh, received no comments, no questions regarding that. So we just need to approve the ordinance 0 0619. I move to accept the recommendation of the Administration and Finance Committee to approve the 2020 budget appropriations ordinance 0 06 19. Second. So at, at times we just need to uh, ship uh, resources uh, to where we may need them. Uh, it's perfect. Excuse me. It's uh, acceptable uh, accounting practices. It's acceptable uh, as long as we just do it through the resolution. And we're taking uh, fifty thousand dollars from the FICA fund and moving it to uh, the IMRF fund, and a hundred thousand dollars from the REF fund to the corporate fund. That's a budget transfer. The budget transfer. I love, I love, I love. So after the first six months of your fiscal year, we put that between funds. Uh, for our I move to accept the recommendation of the Administration and Finance Committee to approve Resolution R-09-19 to authorize 150,000 transfer of the budget carried funds. Need a second. Second. Marty, was it about the same amount as last year? It, it was, but one of the main reasons we had, the, the retirement ones were just FICA to time ref. That's yeah. mainly just for balancing purposes. But the other one is because we went from a, a partial year to a full year and we want to have 25% fund balance, we, we, because of the timing of it, if we ended the year, we would have yeah. one would be below and one would be way up. So we're just making transfers in order to satisfy the requirements of a 25% fund yeah. balance. The other thing to keep in mind is that the budget and appropriation ordinance is your authorized source of expenditure. So if you haven't appropriated funds in a particular fund or account for a particular purpose, then there's no authority by the, the board really hasn't given authority for the expenditure. 
So the BNA ordinance is your guide for how much you're spending or authorized to spend in each of the categories that are listed in there. So Marty tries to keep the balance, he tries to keep a fund balance in there based on what he anticipates expenditures to be in the coming fiscal. Right, Marty? Yeah, nice. Very good. Commissioner Rockerson? Aye. Commissioner Mano? Aye. Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Fink? Aye. Aye. Conference per diem. Right, so the uh, 2020 IAPD IPRA annual conference uh, in January. Uh, since we are expending a certain amount of money towards uh, meals, travel, lodging, um, although technically, uh, it, well, for the State of Illinois Public Act 99 604, uh, we were supposed to, as a board, as a, a district, set a, a dollar amount for what needs to be approved in open session and whatnot. This is slightly less than what we said. We've got $750, but for just basic transparency, uh, we, we bring this uh, out for a vote so that anybody that may question this looks like work. It's, it's right there. So we have lodging for uh, three nights at, uh, for each commissioner. Uh, $440.21, meals at $144, travel $25, parking $125, you know it is in Chicago, so uh, it's going to be a little bit expensive. So each each commissioner uh, sees a, a $734.21 ex, uh, expense just to attend uh, this conference. Now as part of the our, uh, uh, excuse me, ordinance, we ask that the commissioners provide us the receipts for whatever expense that you have and anything uh, that is um, Less than what we, we allot to you, those it comes back to the district. So, so we just need to approve that as a, uh, an open in an open meeting by most most of the people. Yeah. Striker man. <laughs> no, come in the striker man. Who's going to get in the cot? Uh, it's it's like like a a Strapped to the cot like yeah. silence of the lambs. It's not going to fit. Yeah, <laughs> parking <laughs> Okay, I move to accept the recommendation of the Administration and Finance Committee to approve the 2020 Soaring to New Heights IAPD IPRA conference travel advance per diem for each commissioner in amount of $734.21. I second it. Commissioner Vano? I have the agenda for the business meeting okay. for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So you're the delegate? <laughs> yeah, but I might have my alternate call. <laughs> There's lots of Who valid sets? excuses for not attending. So the state of Illinois has uh, grant money in the Park and Recreation, Recreational Facility Construction Grant Program uh, for park projects. And our pool will qualify for uh, that, that is an acceptable uh, project. So very similar to what we did with OSLAD, we need to um, uh, approve a resolution saying that we understand what the requirements are and that we, do, that we have the funds for this. The kicker here is that we won't know if we're going to be able to have those funds until March 17th. So we're playing a little, playing a, so a very tight rope here. So my understanding is that they're, they're delaying the start of the grant uh, will be beyond January 19th, I think is the date where uh, the last date for acceptance. Uh, so we hopefully will know by uh, March if we have this or not. If, if, if we, no, great, we'll continue on with the process. If we get pretty close and we know that we have to pull back the application, we can do that without any penalty. So we're just sort of playing a balance game of uh, uh, when is the best time to sort of keep it How in play or not. How determine the amounts? Pardon? Uh, you know, that's a very good question. And, and do, we only... to, do we have to revise our referendum proposal? No. So it's just extra money? This is, yes, but we would like to be, it, 
we need to be able to show that we are going to be putting. No, I mean use for value. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just that being said, it might be money left over in from the referendum that we can apply elsewhere. Could we have to spend the entire if we get it? Yes. Grant yeah. Money? I think the the maximum that they give is ten percent. There's only like twenty four million dollars available and. Uh, you, you remember what the Ausland was like? Right. Uh, yeah, Forty-seven million, and there was eighty uh, entities applying for that. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be highly competitive. So, you know, it's, it's worth a try. Sure, I think. So, yeah. Is there somebody that can help us with the grant writing? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we hire uh, Upland Design, the people that we use for uh, Austin, the Ausland. Uh, they also do the playground design and everything like that. So minimal expense. Uh, especially if we do receive a grant. And you spend it, have spent it in a year's time? Uh, yes. Got it. I move to accept the recommendation of the Finance and or the Administration of the Finance Committee to approve a target grant authorizing resolution <coughs> R-10-19. Second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of this stuff, uh, sort of, um, all the town hall meeting uh, minutes, sign-in sheets, after the advertising that we did, we got the uh, a uh, letter of support from Representative DeVico's office. So we have that. Still trying to find other uh, letters of support, uh, and then uh, Upland Design is doing the, the bulk of the, the take the all that. And put it in the yeah, yeah. And then we pull the application if we don't. Succeed on the referendum. Yeah. Like or if we know that, hey, they're going to be making a decision on those uh, applications that we can have to pull them off. So, yeah. Upland Design, as well as uh, myself, will be watching that process to make sure as to when we pull it out, you know, if we need to pull it out or not, because we don't want to be, it's a three years, uh, uh, yeah, three years of, uh, of not being able to apply for any kind of state grant if we are given the grant and we don't. We have to refuse it. If your part is too. You're right, it is too. You're but it's uh but it's still too, yeah. Plan. Right. And there's the possibility that the grants won't be decided before the uh, referendum. Yes. And so that's the opportunity. Right. right. Thanks. Sorry. Right. Our pool respect that. Yeah, so there's really two items that I would like to have uh, a discussion about. The, the, First one is uh, through my weekly update. I told you that I met with uh, uh, the architects with uh, Williams Williams Architects about sort of the process that we they've gone through or we've gone through with them of, of how well um, they <coughs> serviced us. So you know they did the uh, systems analysis. They worked with us on trying to do all the, the concepts and everything. So uh, one of the things that we should discuss maybe is a little you know, cart for the horse, but we should at least have that discussion. Do we want to continue on through the process? You know, if we do know that the referendum is successful, do we want to continue with Williams or do we want to go a different route? Um, there's a lot of pros to using Williams. One, that they've gone through this entire process with us, uh, so they kind of know what they're doing. They can hit the ground running in. Uh, Design because you know we, we don't have a whole lot of time between March and when we can break ground. Uh, if we did go with uh, just an RFP, we would that would be uh, four to six weeks just trying to gather up gather up the information, send out the RFP, receive them, review them, invite people in to uh, to interview, maybe second round interviews, and then you know ask them, you know uh, extend it off. So, you know, there's some issues. You know, we, we heard from a, a resident in one of the town halls that they were extremely opposed to us using 
the architects that designed the Oriel Pool, and you know, I don't see that as being an issue. Um, the architects, they don't just give you a pool and you don't have a say in what goes in there. You know, every, every element within a pool goes through an approval process, so if we don't like something, we can switch it. Uh, we could ask for something completely different, but I think what the, the, the elements that we have in that first option is uh, what we, you know, I think we're pretty solid on that. I don't think we need to kind of switch it around, but you know, once we get the designs, then we take it back out to the, the public. That's going to take some time, get their feedback, make some changes. So it, I don't think there's a lot of opportunity to, to go um, outside of Williams, but you know, that's not a decision that I make. It's you know, a decision that comes from you guys. So. Well, we have to remember that Williams didn't build the pool. That's exactly what right. I was thinking. The, the problem with the pool was not as designed, it was as built. Right. Sure. Yeah. I guess the question too is, is when uh, we had that issue with Oriole, the bottom Oriole pool, yeah. was that, I forget, was that their responsibility to have it repaired or was it someone else? I it was someone else. It was someone else. Yeah. So they had nothing to do with that process. No, they, they, right. they designed the pool. It was, it was correctly yeah. the, the builder that actually did the pool. Would they be using the same builder for our pool? Uh, yeah, and, right. But we would, I mean, if, if the builder and because it was a nightmare. Yeah, if, if the builder were, well, so I think if well, a couple of things. It's not, we won't use the same filter. Yeah, I, I think we could say that because of the previous issue that we had with Oreo, that we could possibly exclude you, that. Yeah, exactly. I, I think a couple of things that we want to consider as well is using a construction company or a construction manager. Manager, excuse me, yes, thank you, to, to do this. So we work with um, the at group. Uh, to do the RFP for the systems analysis and the uh, vendor that we work with has uh, decades of experiences in aquatics in the, the North Shore, we did two pools in one year, so they're very familiar with it. Um, Keith um, uh, is uh, experienced in uh, construction, he's done several projects, which you know, the, the previous uh, previous administrations, they didn't have, or the Park District administrations, they didn't have the experience that we currently have on staff, so that's, I don't think that's going to be an issue. The, the only thing I would like to see is uh, maybe Terry LeVault get involved with his years of experience with designing systems for the pool. Um, not that that's been a huge issue at Oriole, but we have had some hiccups with it, I guess. Yeah. So, if we can involve him somehow, some way, I think that would be to our advantage. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, he's a vendor. Oh, a vendor. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we, we certainly can. I think the design process. Yeah, I, I think he can review. And if we wanted to ask him to review the, the specs, we certainly could. I mean, if we use Williams, uh, we don't have a systems problem over at Oriel. I mean, no. everything seems. Well, I actually. Uh, all the systems in there were designed by Halogen. Right. I was okay. just going to say that he, he was involved. He's worked with Williams, so I mean, they're, they're sure. there with who each other are. And, and, uh, you can design. negotiate to have him be a sub consultant under Williams' agreement if you want, or yeah. based on 